What is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to another top five video from yours truly, the Scarender. And before going in, of course, I'm gonna leave the usual disclaimer, and I think in the subject of such a tease, that this is more important to mention. These are my personal opinions about different Pokemons that I feel are overrated in Lee format. And with that said, I had his list originally as a top 10, but due to the traits of a few mods we're sharing on the spot, it was easier for me to make a top 5 and talk about, well, the mods that I think share the issues in mind. So there will be a few Pokemons that will share the, their spots with another, because they're there for the same reason, and it isn't based on how well they do in a tier format, but they're definitely more pointed towards League. Therefore, a lot of stronger Pokemon could be considered a bit worse in this kind of format. So with that said, bear in mind that I might get a few people triggered. And that's okay, because like I said, these are my personal opinions, and I know I'm not always in the right, and I have a different playstyle than most others, which means that a few people might suggest that these mods are good, and if you do that, more power to you. I'm just gonna plant an idea of why I think the mods are overrated, which means that overrated is not the same thing as bad, I just think that they are put in such a high regard, consider what they can do for the format and Team Synergy in mind. So with that said, Let's go into the top 5 overrated Pokemon in the league format. Starting off the list is of course, as the title screen kind of suggested, it is Scizor and Mega Tranitar. They share this spot for the same reason. Having that said, I do actually think these Pokemons are good. There are very, very redeeming qualities about these mods that are making them really, really nice. The thing that puts them on this list is actually how early these guys usually go. Mega Scizor definitely go in really fast. And I think the regular forms are better than the mega form of these Pokemon. It is simply as that. Um, these two are definitely better than the regular form in the league format, where item could be used to actually make yourself usable in a different fashion. These guys becomes kind of a sitting duck. Strantar must rely on Dragon Dance or Rock Polish to speed things. And uh, Mega Sister is basically a very, very hard hitting Mon. While that is terrifying on its own, I do believe the regular scissor with the likes of Aka Berry or Leftovers are easier to use or more flexible to use in this format. And when it comes to regular Tyranitar, definitely a lot better than regular Tyranitar actually. It's because it could use the likes of Smooth Rock to actually maintain its sand for a longer time than Mega Scissor really can do. Oh, Mega Tyranitar, of course, my bad. But at the same time, also due to having an extra Shuffle Berry, we have, of course, Scarf. You can actually be faster from the get go or Bandit. At Mega Tranitar, while it has a massive stats raised, they're not enough to make the Mon better, and therefore I believe both of these become somewhat overrated. Now, with that said, they are highest on the list because they're still very, very good Mons and should be drafted in any league. I just don't think they should be drafted as early as they usually go, because I do believe the regular forms are better for the format itself. Coming up next is actually Ambipom. Now, this is a mod that usually gets drafted, actually. I have both Shinshino and Ambipom on this list, but Shinshino is not actually that often drafted as much as Ambipom is. And while I see the charm of Ambipom, 115 speed is not bad, 100 base attack is not bad, Technician is very, very nice, and it actually has skill link and stuff like that. I do, it has things going for it. What makes it somewhat worse is its defensive capabilities and its typing. Normal typing, rarely a really good typing, depending on the one you're speaking about, but it just doesn't really hold up as well as it do in RU, and even so, it's not definitely that good in RU either. But the, the fake out and stuff like that, there are other mods that do that better, and even actually with stab in mind. And Avipon, you basically just become a sitting duck or actually a bench warmer for a lot of teams in the format. Now, I have seen some people use Avipon well. But it's not an ideal pick for any team in a league format where you have to prep for so much. Ambipom is a mod that easily is walled out, easily is forced out. But uh, people hold it in high regards in a league format, thinking that a speeder normal type could make all the difference in their league team. But it simply isn't that simple, actually. The mods such as Tauros, for example, are much, much more flexible. Kangaskhan has dual. Uh, priority, and then we have the bulkier normal types, which actually could take it on a lot, lot better. So, Amipom, while being a um, pretty okay mon at best, 
is in a league format not as effective and I think people are ignoring the the things that are making it bad because like I said usually this late in draft format actually goes in the middle or even late but it does go and people think they can patch a team if they're slow by using an Abbey Palm which usually means that it lack actually proper switching to because you have to build for Abbey Palm in mind you have to build for it to go around with U-turn and stuff like that and I do believe most people can see this one coming deal with it and pretty much it becomes like I said a sitting duck at, at the end of the day so yeah I do believe Abbey Palm is quite overrated the reason it's high on this list is because it isn't as early drafted as some other of these mons actually are considered to what they can do coming in at number three is a mon that I think most people think are good but it really isn't many bus now, I know what you guys are thinking. Why? Manabus is such a good mon in OU, even UU. Was. is the right word to use here. Manabus was an extremely good mon in X and Y. It did drop some usage, and of course, when Auras came out, because it was much, much more manageable to be dealing with. And uh, yeah, that trait has simply continued. While Manabus is not necessarily the worst mon, it actually is okay. Like, it has a lot of things going for it. Really bulky, can survive most mons actually. Having Toxic, Roost, Foul Play, it is it is a mon that it's actually hard to kill. Having that said, it's usually drafted for its defogging, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's something wrong with somebody having defog and then hoping that this is effective mon with Stellar Frogs being so common in the format. Don't get me wrong, Manibus has enough bulk to pull it off, but if that is all he's gonna do, then there are better options. There simply are better options. But, like I said, Manibus, not necessarily a bad mod, but it gets drafted so early for being a primary defogger. And I only thing I can really say here is that I can say that Zapdos, yes, sure, absolutely. Yeah, I can see the charm of that, but Dark Flying, not as good as for typing as people might get out to be. Uh, a lot of the things that can, of course, threaten it out, gonna threaten it out, and uh, the fighting Pokemons are always carrying, like, sort of Stone Edge or something like that, which always will push it in a range where you either have to defog or roost, and you become a sitting duck, and if you go for a defog and to go, the opponent go for a pull cup of Sword Stance, things get ugly fast, and while you might say, oh, we can go for Foul Play, yeah, but you have to also suggest that you leave in the defogs in to get massive damage onto yourself, so... I do believe it's a double-edged sword, and like I said, many of us, while having the best best of books, really, just isn't as effective in league format as it is in the tiers, and therefore, I kind of having it in the third place, because I do think it's good, I do think it's worse in the league format, and as a defogger, there are better options, sadly. And now we come to the Wanderers Top 2, and I would say they both share a spot here, uh, but I have to, of course, mention Chansey and Blissey. They are, in my regard, one of the more overrated Pokémons that could be drafted in League format. And you want to know why? Yes, because how do you watch this video? Of course, I know, I know, I'm being stupid. But it is because they really can't do too much. These are definitely the momentum killer, and for that, they're actually awesome in the tier represent. Chansey, pretty darn decent in OU. Blissey, pretty darn decent in UU. I really can't say much more about them, but when it comes to league format and you can prep for them, they aren't as good, sadly. So many Pokemon learn superpower and uh, close combat, and since you have a lot of options uh, for be able to deal with them, Chansey or Blissey, they are actually quite manageable to take on. Now, I will say this. I do believe Blissey is the better between these two in the league format, and it has to do with actually that Blissey can hurt. Blissey actually can use his special attack if it is needed. Chansey, same thing. Seismic Tox, Seismic Tox, Seismic Toss, and of course Toxic. I cannot <laughs> combine those two. Not gonna do a retake on that, I actually cannot. Clever. Um, Seismic Toxic, alright. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's the same thing, and it is easily to be managed in in a league format and um, yeah there's really all I can say about them uh, I will say that there are good walls like they can, re they can recover they can keep it on themselves 
but they need the right synergy to be able to wall the things they need to wall. Um, Jancy and Blazer both have the same struggles of having individual mods that definitely can take them out, which means that they're always going to be in some fashion forced out, and um, if the opponent is competent enough, then Chance and Blissey will both become sitting ducks for the team. And that is something you don't want, because if you're gonna have a mod such as this, which have the defensive capabilities, you have to really make sure that it can maintain that without being at risk. And that is so hard to do in the league format that I would never suggest it. And seeing how these both go really early, Chance of being one of the top picks really usually, it just perplexes me because Without the right team structure, you really can't use Shansi just yet. It isn't that good that you can be one of the top picks when you don't know what you're gonna build it around. Shansi simply can't... It is not a building zone, it is something you patch with. If it isn't treated like that, then you gonna have a bad time in a league format. So clearly, if you pick that, then yeah, I would say that you are at big risk of losing the league just there and then. If you're gonna pick some something between these two, Pick Blissey, because at least then you have the option of doing something else than Toxic Sesmitas. That is really all I can say. Now, for my number one pick, and I'm going to have a bit disclaimer here because I'm going to piss people off. Desmond, like I said, overrated. Not bad. Overrated. So, with that said, let's get into my number one. Oh, I can just hear the agony. No, don't leave a dislike, please. Hear me out. Hear me out, please. I do think these guys are very, very overrated, considered to what they can do. Because they do the same thing, and I really want to differentiate these two mods, but like I said, they do the same thing, just only slightly differently. Aporion, Skull, Toxic, Ice Beam, and uh, Wish. Malodic, Skull Toxic Ice Beam, Recover. They can do a few things. Malodic has Dragon Tail, Vaporeon can Roar, Vaporeon can Baton Pass, Acid Armor. But it's a clear stop what this Pokemon possibly can do. Now, in UU, they have usage. There are things that they can do well against. Having that said, they're really not the primary warrior types in that tier. But I would suggest that they are actually quite effective in it. In League? No, not so much. I would actually make an argument that Slowking, Yellison from RU are better Pokemons in, in this format than what these guys possibly can do. And hell, they're probably both walling them rather nicely. There are really nothing they can do against other bulky water types, and that's kind of scary. And um, like I said here, there are a few perks, I mean, Malodic can get Dragon Tail, and of course Vaporeon can Roar, so as a phaser I guess they're decent. But that's the same thing, they still can't really hurt the Pokémon, they need a team to actually build around them. Malodic and, and Vaporeon really aren't good on their own, they need a team to actually work properly, uh, with the right facing, the right offensive pressure. And since these guys are very very common to go within the first three rounds, you have no idea what you're building for, which means that you are now creating a team which everybody will just know that, all right, I need a lightning type or a war absorber and electric type, uh, and that's it. You, you have dealt with these mods, basically. They are so easy to prep for, they're so easy to deal with, and many people hold them in such a high regard, and like I said, I suggest that they are good in the tier they're on, but in league format, it's not the same thing. You need to treat it as it's not the same thing. And uh, yeah, I really, really think these two are extremely overrated. And uh, my reasons have been foretold already. A lot of war types are already a lot better with offensive pressure. Malodic and Vaporeon can't provide that. Rarely can. When they're getting the skull burns, that is pretty much the best they can do. And then recover stall, hoping that they get the kill. And you don't want an LE format, believe me, you don't want chance to be a part of your strategy, you never want to have a part of that strategy. That is... That is just wrong, and really, like I said, there are a lot of other water types that could do this job a lot better. Now with this said, I will of course end the video like this, and uh, these are my top 5, 9-ish, depending on you want to view it, picks, and um, yeah, like I said, 
Overrated doesn't mean they're bad. Having that in mind, what mods do you guys think are mods that are, well, overrated or just too often used considered to what they can do in the Lee format? And uh, yeah, I hope you actually enjoyed this video. It was actually kind of hard to create this video. I, I will say this because I want to give my reasons in a good way, but I also don't want to make people, well, disappointed about my picks. But I do realize that I've picked a lot of mods that actually people like. And uh, I hope I left with enough, enough arguments here to why I think they aren't as good as people make them out to be. Uh, and yeah, like I said, with that said, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I really like making these top five. So stay tuned on Twitter for the next top five coming up. But it looks like it's already decided. But I won't spoil it right now and then. But yeah, with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I see you in the next video. Until then, take care.